the strip bleach and the ruby eye bleach. Let's go! As the COVID-19 pandemic swept across the world, people were forced to stay indoors and practice social distancing. For many, this meant a loss of connection and community. But for the fly fishing slash tying enthusiasts of the world, it was a chance to come together in a new and meaningful way. TNL was a fly tying show that had gained a dedicated following over the years. Every Thursday night, people from all over the world would tune in to watch the hosts, Tim and Dana, as they shared tips, techniques, and stories about their love of fly fishing and fly tying. As the pandemic hit, Tim and Dana knew that their show could be a source of comfort and connection for their viewers. They kept doing their virtual fly tying workshops, encouraging their audience to participate and share their own experiences. And participate they did. The TNL family quickly grew, as people from all walks of life found solace in the shared passion for fly fishing. They gathered online every Thursday night, eager to learn, share, and connect with others who understood the joy and peace that fly fishing brings. Through TNL, the fly fishing community was able to find a sense of belonging and purpose during a difficult and uncertain time. And as the pandemic waned and life slowly returned to normal, the TNL fam remained a close-knit and supportive group, bonded together by their love of fly fishing and the outdoors. Join Tim and Dana as they embark on their fifth season of TNL Fly Time. Yeah. Oh, we're starting the music off strong today. Oh. You love my gum? I need a pair of spoons. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't love that gum in your mouth. Oh, no. oh what's but, happening, good people? What Ladies. Is that? Ladies and gentle men. And women. And if you're not gentle, you're still welcome. <laughs> <laughs> There's no excuse to be none whatsoever. So welcome back to the turn of the century. Turn of one zero one. One oh one. One oh one. And we're on the home stretch to two hundred. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can call it home stretch quite yet. Well, but. it's uh better than one hundred because we're officially past the one hundredth episode. Yes. On to one oh one. And what a, what a week Uno. it was. What a week. What a week. It was great. How about that song I found for the intro song? I Well, you've never struggled with the intro music. <sighs> Ever. Like this one is what I consider intro music. <laughs> Intro's intro. good. I like it. Yeah. See that we burnt the folks out last week. They are not back. <laughs> no more K-pop. <laughs> uh, we will bring the K-pop back because everybody in here sent me private messages and said, uh, Dana for DJ, Pre like president, but DJ uh, president. Speaking think, of presidents, I don't think he did. Uh, there's one in jail. <laughs> did, is he actually indicted? Like actually, actually? In jail? Yeah, you know, got arrested and. Uh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't I guess know. you just don't. I don't know. Pay off. The no, wrong you, no, you, you do. <laughs> you just got to do it better. Apparently, <laughs> you just uh, got to use crypto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A friend of mine told me. Yeah. Um, it was a it was a word of advice. So uh, asking yeah. for a friend. Yeah, yeah. What exactly is when you when you pay someone off? What does it mean? 
Well, I, it's uh, what do they call that? It's like well, it's and, um, contortion. No, that's a that's, guy. That's that's before you paid him <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe after in jail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Touch your toes oh, is man. what they said. Can, Contortionist. Uh, um, not the right word. Con- uh, confrontationist. Help Conf- us out, guys. Confrontation. What happens? Um, you're you are. Um, Oh man, I don't. This word is escaping me. John Onorati's here. The mayor's in the house. Raymond McDonald has come to say hola, one and all. Mr. Pape, happy Thursday, everybody. Joe Manchinton's in the house. Um, extortion, extortion. Uh, all that came up is is prostitution illegal in Canada? <laughs> I don't know how they well, got that from that question. At least that's on your phone. Oh man. Um, when you gotta go through the histories later, yeah, you know what do they call that? Um, Extortion. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I was right. Yeah, that's right. So if you're yeah, gonna yeah. get with a contortionist, <laughs> don't pay. Don't him be off. an extortionist. Yeah. <laughs> we could right. we could write another song for episode oh, one hundred and two. Yeah. Pick a genre. Let's do it. One hundred and one. It's like fly fishing lessons one hundred and one. This is fly tying one hundred and one. Actually, is a fly tying show. And we're actually going to tie some flies tonight. And this is going to get leachy for all the Stillwater folks who are just out there with their propane torches <laughs> trying to get the ice to come off the lakes. <laughs> well, I thought you meant maybe out of the bottom of their boats. Oh, well, that's only people who guide. That's <laughs> professionals. And that's one of our professionals. Oh, yes. Uh, Jordan went to check out his... Um, Mr. Pape said extortion is blackmail. Same thing? Yeah, I guess it would be the same thing, right? Because he, oh. he paid off the female individual. D- but do you mean it's like, here's 50 bucks, just be quiet? Is that, I'm ali- guessing is that, that illegal? It, I'm guessing it wasn't 50. That maybe plays yeah, well, into it. Five million? Yeah. What, what? I mean... I, don't, I think it's because he was also the president at the time, right? No, yeah. I think this might have been way a long time ago. Then what, who cares? I don't know. I if think, I what, give I you think money. what we did is we just <laughs> might have stirred the pop. <laughs> stirred the, the pop. pop. The pape. Pop, pape. <laughs> we stirred the Tom <laughs> Pape. Tom, you've been yeah, stirred. It's okay. It's okay, Tom. DJT has been served, and uh, Tom Pape's <sighs> been stirred. So there it is. That's our semi-current events rant. Yeah. What and else is current, oh, Tim? Man. Well, Mr. Riley just joined us. Haven't seen him oh, in a couple man, weeks. Oh, man, that's like... You see what I did? I went and I shared it in his group when it came up so that he would oh, know we're on. Point. That's a good point. So you're welcome, Mr. Riley, and it is super good to have you around tonight. That's a good point, Tim. I am way behind on some. Uh, <laughs> ah, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you feel me. You yeah, get it. I get it. Yeah, hear it. what I'm saying. <laughs> West Side representing. Yes. yes uh, Cod's in the house. Mr. Augustin up, is Bob? here with a newly found vision. A new vision. Yeah, he's in for uh, cataract surgery. Ah, that's right. And uh, hopefully, we look clear as can be. Yeah, see, everybody thinks it's episode 99 because I tricked them with this <sighs> right here. With what? Look on the screen. I put episode 99. Oh, man. You know, sometimes I just want people to think they went back in time. That's good. More so, what I do this for is because I want to... Don't say I forgot. <laughs> Take <laughs> that's it off. Exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say. I just keep people fresh. I'm oh, like, yeah. hey, are you guys able to see this? Well, I guess they are. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, that's uh, yeah, yeah episode. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry. What were you saying about episode ninety nine? It's <laughs> it's gone it's forever. Gone. It's gone. So we're gonna tie up some leeches, and yes, they are very are. great, good, fantastic. Brian Chan actually designed one of these, the ruby eyed leech, yes, and it is it? great for lakes. The it ob- is also I call it the auburn. The, auburn <laughs> the the orange. <laughs> Aren't you glad I didn't orange. do a red bead? Yeah. Well, that'd be way too predictable. That would be red yeah. ruby eyed. <laughs> Uh, uh, really good patterns, really yep. easy patterns to tie. And so uh, show them the dish. If you have a dish like this at home, um, what you can do is, oh, you don't have, they, nobody has these yet? Oh, oh, they don't, do they? Well, it looks well, like we've got that, 200 Ricky? ready to go out into your kits for season next season. six next year. So anyways, these kits, what, you, so nice. what you do is you take your, your bags so we're on episode 14. Or if you just have the individual kits, that works too. You just got to pull them out, put them, in, them out. put them in your pan. <laughs> put them put um, in your pan, in pape. your tray. Mr. Pape, put them in your pan. <laughs> pape, pape, <laughs> we could do Peter Piper oh, picked a pape. Pape put his his parts in a plate. S- yeah. Pape. Okay. Anyways. Extortion. All right. Extortion, Extortion from Montana. <laughs> Mr. Sanguins. 
And uh, extortionist, ex- what was the stretchy flexible one? An extortion, uh, no. a contortionist. contortionist. All right. Yes. yes. Definitely not me. And um, all right. Well, we got the uh, the Grinniers in the house from BC. Yeah, Hope you guys are having a west. good Mr. Van Fleet. What is, what's fish layers? We should play Jeopardy here. Jeopardy. Oh. I don't know how to do that. I, I don't know. But yeah. it'd be great. Be great. Another we thing could, to lose at. I also, um, I'm, I'm in trouble. I got some work to do when your time flies. Oh, I've yes. Some other things today. <laughs> and that's how so she goes. So there's, yeah. All right. That's how she goes. Episode 100 kind of took us by storm. All right, Scooter. Scooter. Keep your eyes on the road, but listen to the sultry sound of our voices. I'm checking in by car ride. He didn't say he's driving. He's in a ride. That's his way of saying he's driving. And he's going to the first fly fishing getaway of the year. So nice, if this Scooter. doesn't get you fired up. Yes. Nothing will. You might as well turn around and go home. <laughs> I mean, catching your first fish of the year, like someone did last week. Yeah. By the name of Tim, Chas, and Dana. Dana. It felt good. It felt good to get out on, on the water for some whistle dogs. Yeah. In abundance. Um, boom. Roger Beatty said, Jeopardy, I'm good answering questions with questions. Ah. Sounds like he's a lawyer. Yeah. Roger? It is weird, isn't it? Like, Jeopardy was always like, you had to answer the question. What is the ruby eyed leech? What is Brian Chan's most sought after fly? Ding ding. Yes, Tim. Uh, what is the ruby eyed leech? All right, bing. That's 500. Uh, yeah. would you like to take 600 <coughs> for extortionism? Just the way your mother likes it. <laughs> <laughs> come Wait, on, take me back to some, give, some SNL. How come you give me some SNL. <laughs> <laughs> with uh oh i who can, was that uh, uh, uh that's uh will ferrell will ferrell yeah. that's classic <laughs> sorry uh <laughs> i will take ape, ape tit. Tit. Uh, you do you mean appetite appetite, <laughs> uh, appetite dejeuner uh, uh too good no i would take ape tit for 200 alex uh roger played one i played with one on tv context hopefully yeah. he didn't uh oh no played i played one i didn't play with one i was like man uh, i hope he it, didn't yeah. pay that lawyer off because he'll be with <laughs> the other extortionist the other guys. tom hanks black jeopardy yes yeah that was so um, good still intrigued when somebody throws an angry face emoji into this yeah uh, I, yeah i just want to know who it is i know like come on come out of there if, if you're willing to put that up there put your hand up in the comments so we know it's you yeah just own it All own right. it all right. Well, you know what that means, folks. Chaz, everything out, came up at once. Out of, out of the plunge, the plunge bath. This is curious, Chaz. I want to know what is that? What is one of those words Trish was asking me? One twenty. I found them. Like one hundred and twenty. Yeah, I found That's it. That's super cheap. So I signed up to buy it. Chaz said two hundred. I walked away from my cart. They came back to me and said, "Hey, we got a discount for you." So yeah. Anyways, I got it for one twenty. It's coming. Yeah, if I ordered it. All right. So we getting to do that next Thursday. Yeah, I was going to sit in here and do it. And then my luck, it would burst. Yes. And that would be a financial (laughs) disaster end of... uh, A gear explosion. But the biggest question is, is there room for two? Um, Well, there's always room for two, Tim. Two Tims? (laughs) Two. Because two Tims is different than a Dana and a Tim. (laughs) Two two Tims, one Dana. (laughs) One Dana, one Tim is one and a half. Two... A Dana and a Chaz? No. No, no, sir. No, sir. Wouldn't be any water left. So anyways, uh, Mr. Granger is in from uh, the YouTube and says, what's up all? What is up? So typically, this stuff flies in one at a time, but not today. And Not I, today. It's all there. There it is. We it's just, all We're just going to look at it. And, There's uh, some good so stuff up there. You got some brown or some black in your UTC or some olive, whatever yeah. you like. Something dark. Um, yeah, you can get that. Uh, spun up on your auto bobbins. Mm-hmm. That's all you need. We're going to be uh, going through, as you see up there, there's two leeches. Um, both are just going to use, a, I'm using the same thread, I'm using a brown. Just to keep it simple, but anything dark in nature will uh, will apply. So because John uh, threw up his hand like that, does he mean that he is oh. the angry face? I think maybe he came in after we talked about that, but we oh, can okay. accuse him for okay. sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. What else we got up there? Yeah, though? we got some other things here. Like the free fly fishing lessons is, is, it is booked? beyond booked. Yeah. 
Well, that's cool. I think there's some people from the group. Yeah, it looks to be about 40 people coming to spend the day with us on April 22nd as we're doing a free intro to fly fishing. Yes. And uh, Jose has her Real Adventure for Kids set up there. This is free, folks. This is just a give back between us at Fly Fishing Boy River, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, uh, and Josie and the team at Real Adventures for Kids. So, uh, that's... Why did we do this? Because sometimes getting into fly fishing is intimidating and expensive, and I get it. It's a craft. It's how we make our living uh, by taking people fishing, by teaching people how to fish. But we all just sat around and said, hey, why don't we just give a day and get people in here and get them fired up about fly fishing? So, yeah, we got an intro to fly fishing course. We're going to talk about history of fly fishing, what is fly fishing, different techniques of fly fishing, we're going to talk about how to read the water. We're going to talk about bug selection, uh, the importance of entomology for fly fishing. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about a couple rigs, a couple knots, how to set up some things, nymph rigs, hopper dropper. Uh, we're probably going to keep it a little on the lighter end because you won't remember everything uh, as we yeah. found out in the past. <clears throat> yeah. And then to finish off your three-hour lesson, you're going to go out to a field and you're going to learn how to cast a fly rod. And uh, that's about it. That sounds I like believe there's awesome. going to be some yeah, uh, burgers and grub and stuff there. Nice. Um, so yeah, if you if you do want to come, it's free and it's at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop in Olds, Alberta. Um, we were going to take eight per class, which that's full. We kind of said maybe we should go to ten because sometimes when things are free, you people don't show up. You put your <laughs> name down. Um, because there's no commitment on your part, you just don't show up, and that kind of screws things over. So. 10's probably um, we could do 10 yeah but but about. just show up if you signed up yeah. show up if you can't simple. come just call and say I can't come and then we can add some other people to the list so that uh, as many people as possible can do this uh, how to set the hook in big sticks <laughs> <laughs> well <clears throat> some people need to know and some people already know it yeah so I do encourage you guys if you most Thursdays you don't tie with us and you just watch and you and you uh, have fun. You could still have fun, but I think tonight these flies could be very attainable, uh, attainable to tie along during the show, and we can manage that because they both are uh, semi quick. Yep. Um, the first, the Brian Chan's Ruby Eyed Leech. It's a really cool pattern. Um, What's cool about it is it can be tied with different materials. And so tonight what Tim's going to show you is a unique way to kind of blend some materials to kind of emulate what some of you might know as Arizona semi-seal, which is a very super awesome dubbing. It's got some flex, some sparkle. It's got some uh, different colors in it. Uh, but with the material that we gave you guys, you're going to learn how to kind of make your own dubbing uh, in a bit of a dubbing brush. Yep. Right? Exactly. Uh, that's cool about that. Super cool. All right. Uh, what else we got up there? Oh, we have, still have uh, Western Canadian Fly Fishing Guide School, May 5th to 7th and May 12th to 14th. I believe there is still a couple spots at this point available, as some haven't totally committed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was one spot <laughs> left, and then somebody, uh, due to health issues, had to step right. away from it. So, so now two. there's two spots left for you guys. Uh, a bunch of people in here have already signed up for guide school, and by a bunch, I probably mean three or four. Mm -hmm. um, we got some other people that aren't part of the TNL fam, and after guide school, we will slide them in and adopt them <laughs> here <laughs> All to the, the TNL fam. All right. All right. What's so, that, what's that thing on the bottom there? Oh, 10, oh, that's ten thousand plus giveaway. Man, I'm always forgetting about this. So, so if you, this is your first season with us, um, what happens at the end? Um, nope, same bingo card this week as last week. So it should, it's, yeah, that's there. Uh, guides, get, John's already in the TNL fam. Oh, John. Yeah. What's up? There it so. is, in the TNL fam, and he's coming to guide school. So that makes uh, five of the six. I think that makes all, no, five out of six are in the TNL fam right now. Yep. Um, what is this $10,000 plus giveaway final episode? Well, we started it a couple years ago where we gave away a bunch of fly boxes full of flies. And what we did is we just tried to raise a bit of money for the show to keep us going. And so we just did it in kind of like a donation manner. It's not a raffle. It's just a, hey, if you donate, 
Well, we'd like to enter you in the opportunity <laughs> to uh, to be given some a gift from us. And um, last year was incredible. It yeah. was super fantastic. We had a uh, a lot of stuff to give away. And this year we're building and we've got a lot of stuff to give away. And I know someone in here by the name of Mr. Blake Teague has Ooh. created something, uh, built something, a masterpiece, uh, and we'll show it here, not tonight, but uh, it's 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 just so you guys know that one item alone is upwards of two thousand mm-hmm. dollars. It's incredible. Yeah, and, and on top and, of uh, that, there's some trips to give away. There's trips. There's fly fishing trips. There's Garmin GPSs. There's a whole bunch of items like knives. There's tree cams. There's cellular tree cams. Um, we've got some two or three or four night stays at rec base uh that's that's over about 1500 bucks we've got probably three trips to give away which is makes you up to three or four thousand i'm pretty sure we're gonna probably get back into another vice to give away yes uh with a table that mr struthers donated so there's about a thousand plus dollars uh we're gonna have the box of flies that tim's title all year so you got 200 some flies at three to five dollars a fly there's Anyways, it's List pretty epic, on. and yeah. we're going to have shirts, we're going to have hats to give away. Uh, what else have people donated? Uh, people keep reaching out to me, asking if they can donate stuff to this giveaway. Um, and then awesome. Yeah, and so next week what we do on our website is we open up, so you can go in there and make a donation to the show, and the donations, um, I think it's a $10 minimum donation. And so you just go in and you could donate a hundred dollars and that gets you 10 opportunities um to receive a gift from us <laughs> and uh you can donate okay. ten dollars so we had someone win last year on a ten dollar donation mm-hmm. um so yeah that's a that's a a big thing for us it's a super cool mm-hmm. way for our sponsors to get involved and um yeah for the show to go on yes sir um wait till you see what blake made yeah. Yep. Um, and it's, it's it worth. can it can ship anywhere. Trust me. <laughs> it's not a. Uh, fire let's poker. just say it's worth its weight in gold. Oh, I see what you did there. Well, there's your clue, folks. Well, there is your clue. Wait and see. <laughs> um. So that's it for the announcements on that part. Yeah. Your flying go cards, as you guys have seen scrolling across the screen, you're probably getting dizzy because of it, but uh, it's the same bingo card as last week. So there's a hundred numbers and we're going to roll with that one for a bit. So does this mean another 52 call night? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it did take some time. We're going to hope someone's a lot luckier this time, Tim. So here's yes. question. Should a fisherman use a strip set, lift set, or side set when one hooks their guide? Um, <clears throat> well, Mr. Beatty. Well, you should you should uh, make sure that you've set up your life jacket to <laughs> keep you floating when you follow the boat. <laughs> Put your head between your knees and kiss something goodbye. Uh, Chaz, question. Chaz offered something and I can't find it. Yes, John, it will make it to you. Uh, don't have anything like that here to help me. Um... What is it you're looking for? Maybe guide school. Maybe guide school. Uh, yeah, you come on up. Come on up. Um, Ken's from Australia. Good day, mate. Good day. Good day, Jazz. Uh, but worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. Uh, I can make it to New Jersey. Um, Definitely can make it to New Jersey. Yeah, it can make it to New Jersey. Uh, all right. So that's the flango cards. <clears throat> And then tonight, oh my goodness. Pretty little brown tray. What are the giveaways? Oh, why don't you you show the good peeps? We got last week's because those didn't make it out the door. Yeah, last week's are still here. We got a bunch of stuff in here from Morning View Mercantile. Show what it is because those apples are. This is is a bomb. So these are the apples. These are all freeze dried goods. Yeah. Um, This this one's pretty great too. The uh, pulled pork. Freeze dried -dried pulled 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 pork. pork. And then we got some unicorn poop in here. All right. So that's going to be set up into the giveaways. Uh, we have a box of uh, flies. Very nice. Look well organized. Super awesome. Well done. We've got another shirt from Jose at Alberta Fly Girl. 
Um, she awesome. just cranked she, out the yeah, giveaways this so year. Giveaways. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, because this is this week's, we got some more unicorn poop. <laughs> What's up? We've got some freeze dried pulled pork. So for him and her. Him and her. And a few flies that go along with it. And then what's really cool. Oh, we got to talk about those. We got balls. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Oros as well. What is Oros? It is the new age indicator. Boom. All right, folks. Do you use indicators? Yes, the answer is yes. Because both of these <laughs> flies tonight can be fished under an indicator. Did you know that? You didn't, but you thought it was a streamer pattern. All right. This is awesome because there's airlock, which kind of took the game over, in my opinion. And yeah. then these orals came out. And so you can just kind of see, like, uh, before the airlock had the device on the top that you would take apart and put your line in. So it created a bit of a hinge in your line. Not like casting nymphs is pretty. Uh, but now what they've done here is you can see. Oh, I did uh, it. Yeah, it did it. It works for me tonight. Now will it see you after? That's a good question. <laughs> but you can see the diagram there. I almost said diaphragm. It looks like a diaphragm. Yeah, kind of. Um, how the connection piece is in the middle of this ball. <laughs> and why that's really cool is because it doesn't create a lopsided hinge effect. And so it casts very nicely. And um, these are awesome. These are really, really awesome. And they're in a Rocky Mountain fly shot. Look at that. It came back to me. Oh, look at that. Well, that, um, that is the key statement so here. They're, so they're just in a Rocky Mountain fly shop. And we're giving away some 20% off code. So don't go buy them yet because after, uh, in a little bit here, I'm going to uh, reveal these codes for you guys. Oh, nice. What's this? That must have come on. You lost half yours. There it is. Yeah, guys, so these indicators, we've uh, actually the had the, done, uh, the opportunity to, to try them out uh, last year. Got some out of the States and uh, been kind of working with them and then got some more Tim, this my balls year. fell. <laughs> Finally. And um, yeah. It, <laughs> Tim, where's my white ball? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's the blue one. Not right over there. <laughs> there it is. Um, but yeah, no, anyways. I'm missing half, half my balls <laughs> I don't gone. know where it went. Tim, you're always maybe watching my the, balls. Maybe it's in the bag. Uh, Anyways, you will get the other half of that ball eventually. <laughs> but like Tim said, yeah, they've been great. You just have to just realize that these are indicators, okay? The B word doesn't come up around them. They're uh, simply an indicating device as to what may be going yeah. on under the water. Exactly. There it is. There it so is. yeah, up in here is going to be a demonstration code that will work for 20% off for you guys. Yes. And... Um, so we got lots of giveaways. We're going to play Fly and Go. Make sure you download your card. All the information is below. And uh, we're going to say thanks to some pretty awesome people. We're going to come back and we're going to tie the ruby-eyed leech. The ruby -eyed Brian leech. Chan's Lake Fisherman's Dream called the ruby-eyed leech. My view would be that we offer people a chance to get away from the hustle and bustle of city life. We don't plan for anybody to do anything out here. We just offer them a nice place to have a base and then they can they can either drive, good access here to you know, Rocky, Nordeg, all those places if you want to go farther west, or you can stay on the property as long as you want. Well, how about that? 
<laughs> you're acting like there's supposed to be another <laughs> ad in there. <laughs> <laughs> when you get caught on your phone. Well, you see, he passes off the blame right on the oh, Tim cam. <laughs> well, Tim, you better get going. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, um, I'm going to switch over mics here, and we'll get rolling on this fly. All right, all right, all right. So if you like me. We do like you, Tim. Well, I like me too. You're tying out of your season five kit, like so. Um, and if you give that a little jiggle, you're going to notice it's pretty empty. Where are we here? 14 because it's on the desk already. How about that? Yeah, you're so prepared. Anywho, that list is, or that uh, that box is getting awful empty, which means we're almost at the end of the season, which is fairly bittersweet. <clears throat> but go ahead and open up your kit. You're going to see this guy here. Yes, you are. Ruby Eyed Leech. We're tying this on a size six hook. Um, and there's definitely in this one, there is some beads that are kind of... Dump it in your pan. Yeah, I'm going to dump it in my pan because... This is why your beads won't go everywhere. This is true. So I'm going to empty this out. As always, you get your fly already tied for you. So we'll set that aside. Um, you're going to have a bag with your hooks and your beads in it. And then you're going to have just a big bag of a whole bunch of that dubbing slash flashy material that we're going to tie out of. So <clears throat> go ahead and open up your bag with your hooks in it. And let's get your um, your cone on there. So this, on the front of this one has a cone and then it has, uh, we're gonna be tying with a bead as well. So we'll we'll hop on over to this other cam so you can see this here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Garth is partying on over there. Okay, so we got a cone. I'm gonna put the point of the hook through the small portion of the cone. But we actually need another piece here. We need that, uh, we need that bead. So you have these amber colored beads and that's why i was laughing earlier because it's could be the the amber eyed leech um the two most common colors you see this tied in are the amber as well as the red um i don't know which on the leeches you kind of see both colors that it can be tied in so uh, we're gonna we're gonna be doing this with the kind of amber color today um <clears throat> now something that's not in your kit and it's not essential if you don't want to uh, to use it but what i i like and you've kind of seen me do it before is if you just have a piece of lead wire hanging around it makes it easier to, to fill up that space in that cone and to kind of hold that bead where you want it to. If I just take a few wraps of this, we're not going to do very many, like literally like three or four, hide that tag in. And all that's going to do is help hold that cone in place. And if you don't have any wire, um, just fill up that gap with thread or, or uh, as uh, Chaz actually showed earlier when he tied while I was gone that episode, he showed you how to put some UV resin in there and basically accomplish the same thing. What happens if you're going too fast? What can the folks do? Well, that's actually really simple. You're just going to drop SOS in the comments, and that's going to let me know that you need us to stop. And you're going to see that flashing. If you, do, you just need to, need to catch up or whatever, these flies are going to be pretty um, simple. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in a rush. We're never in a rush here, um, especially if you watched last week's episode. You'll know you were all here with us till 10 p.m. Um, we're going to take our way through this pretty slow. So um, how I'm going to start this, I'm going to bring this other bead back, kind of push it up against... Uh, where I led that let, left that lead wrap in there. And I'm gonna grab my thread. Like I said before, I'm tying that UTC 140, and this is in that dark brown. And I'm gonna take some thread wrap starting just behind the bead. It's not gonna hold that bead in place right now, so don't worry about that. We're gonna be dealing with that here momentarily. So I'm just gonna lay down some thread wraps all the way back to the bend. And I'm gonna keep it right up on top of the bend, which when my thread is hanging down, it should be right around that, um, that barb point on the, on the fly. So let's dig into our big mess of material here. So pretty, the entire leech is, is tied out of this material and you've got lots in here to tie a few flies. Um, 
I'm gonna pop all the staples and I'm gonna dump this in my tray here. Now it is kind of hard to keep this super well organized, but just try to keep the bunches of the colors together. So they're gonna come in like this, so those two colors. So just go ahead and separate off that white, or sorry, the white, that red. Okay. I <laughs> bet <laughs> there's no white in there. Um, and we're gonna start off by grabbing some red here. So as you can see, it's almost like its own dubbing, but it's much, much longer fibers. So I'm gonna, um, basically, I'm just gonna pull out a little piece of it. And I'm gonna make my tail with two different colors here. So I kind of roll it together. And this is just a big long piece, so don't worry about it being too fancy looking. I'm gonna bring in this piece and I'm gonna measure a tail, roughly a hook shank in length out the back. And because this piece that I pulled off is pretty thin, I'm gonna end up doubling this over. I'm gonna spin my thread towards my hand, which always causes that to jump rearward and grab the material. So I'm somewhere right in there. I'm gonna take a few wraps up on top of this other piece before I fold it back over. And now this piece is gonna be way longer on top. That's okay, I'm gonna trim it down here a sec. I fold it back over, take a few thread wraps up on top. And now to get that length that I want, I'm just gonna run my scissors down, kind of like at a bit of an angle again. So remembering that length that I want it to be. I'm actually just kind of rubbing my scissors on it and tapering that out. So it doesn't look like a straight cut. That's what we're trying to avoid on this tail. Um, and now I'm gonna go grab, like, look at the size of this clump of dubbing. This is massive. Um, we're gonna grab a piece of that off. Whew. And this is just such a mess. Got too much of it there. I'm gonna grab a white, or sorry, I paused with the white. There's uh -huh. no, there's literally no white here at all. Um, <laughs> just one of those brain things. I'm grabbing a clump of it and I'm gonna kinda just, this one's a little finer, so I'm gonna stack it and then roll it in my fingers. And it'll rope up and it'll kinda get a little thicker for you. Um, I'm gonna lay this right at the similar tail length as uh, the, the red portion. And this time I'm actually gonna, for, you can see when I push it down, I pushed it in and around that hook. So it kinda is gonna engulf that red when it's, when it's done. I'm gonna take a thread wrap to tighten that down. And I'm just gonna allow that to kinda fill up and over there. And I will take that and fold it back over because I've got a little bit there. It's gonna bolster up that tail just a smidge. Take a few thread wraps to make sure I've doubled that over properly. And that's gonna be my tail. I don't want it to be super long because then my leech is just gonna um, really extend in its overall length. And this, this leech is meant to be a little smaller. Um, even this isn't a super big, <coughs> super big hook, or sorry, uh, super small hook, but still. So basically from here on out, all we're gonna do is we're gonna be um, basically making a, uh, a dubbing loop. And I'm gonna show you how to blend some of these materials together. So. I'm gonna start off by placing two fingers on my thread, folding this over to create this loop, okay? So all I did was two fingers over, made a loop, and now I'm gonna toss it behind and over the loop, my thread, okay? Just like when we do any tying off of material, we have to have it behind and in front. So when I did that, now it allows me to kind of keep that loop in one place up on my hook shank, and then I can take some thread wraps back so that it starts right where I left that. At the back there by the tail. Take a few thread wraps, and I'm gonna advance my thread forward up against the bead. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my dubbing spinner. So whatever tool you have, I'm using a loon here today, but uh, very, very simple tool. Some of them look a lot fancier than that, but this is just plain Jane, works really well. I'm gonna stick that in my loop. I'm gonna let that hang down. Now I'm, all I'm gonna do is throw a quick half hitch in here, which is just an, oh, ooh, this music, that's a change. I'm just bringing a little <laughs> sweeter in so you can just enjoy the ride, Tim. Enjoying the ride, Dan. All I did was a half hitch so I could then go ahead and I can set my bobbin out of the way because I'm going to be working with this dubbing loop for a little bit here. But before we really get to that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab um, some of this red dubbing material we have here. So just You know, I kind of think the name Ruby is like... The music I played. Yeah, yeah. I like it, kind of. <laughs> a guess. question from Rodrigo. Is it true that the color of the cone or bead head can affect the amount of captures uh, depending on the ambient light? That's, I mean, I would love to know. Refraction, reflection, all those things are affected. 
um yeah the the answer could be true and the answer could be maybe <laughs> there's so many things that I, you're probably right it does capture light a little different um but man there's so many things that a fish could see or not i mean it's no i think it's truly no different than putting a hot spot on a nymph you, you just you're putting a few different colors of red thread or pink thread or whatever up at the top um it's the same reason we tie a sex organ on a on a worm like it just shows a differing no that's because we want them to know that is a mature worm they oh. can only eat mature worms oh i gotcha it's mating season yeah <laughs> so that's a good question we'll talk about that idea after this fly because i have an opinion okay okay strange <laughs> strange so all i'm doing here guys is i'm just basically tearing um this stuff back and forth and this is a little bit long so i'm gonna cut it in half because when i go to pick up that black dubbing I just basically stack this all together and I'm pulling it apart. Now I'm gonna grab myself a clump of, and this is what we're gonna call um, rolling, rolling and blending. So I grabbed a piece of that black dubbing. I've got the red here. Now all I'm gonna do is put them together, flip it, bop it, twist. spread it, twist, twist it. it. Bingo, bango, bongo, boombo. What a favorite game of mine. <laughs> so as you can see, that's already starting to blend. You're getting the black to blend in there. And this is kind of like mixing paint as a kid when you're trying to try what different colors look like. I can no, spread it out. it's like mixing marshmallows when you're making ghost gum. Oh, that okay, that too. Did anybody in here ever make ghost gum around the campfire? Yeah, that's did a you good not? Question. Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. It's exactly what it's like, but not a marshmallow. So all I'm doing is I'm literally doing this. I'm rolling it. I'm pulling it apart, stacking on top of each other. And before too long, you're going to see that that's actually a really perfect blend. And if you find that you've got too much red, add some more black. This is too much. I can, I mean, this is speaking of too much, um, but this is too much for one fly, but that's okay. We're mixing it so that you can then go and tie multiple flies together. Okay. So pull it all apart, stack it. Once you got a good blend you're happy with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pinch of it like this, and I'm going to set the other one down. Okay. Now I'm gonna come over to my dubbing loop. I'm gonna open it up. So I put fingers in it to open it. And I'm gonna slide that dubbing up inside of it. And then I'm just gonna take this and spread it out a bit. Okay, so I don't want big clumps all right together. Because you can choose how, how bulky this fly is based on what you put in here. So that's probably pretty close to enough, but I'm gonna grab one more little pinch off of here because I can always take um, take some out or not use the full dubbing loop. So I, I like that. It's all spread out quite nice. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with my finger, place it just below, take my dubbing spinner, spin it. And you're gonna see that all that material is gonna start to rope up and it's gonna get really tight. We don't wanna over spin it cause then we could break our thread, but you'll be able to tell, you can kind of feel the tension when it doesn't wanna spin anymore. So now I've got this really tight rope that I'm gonna go in here <clears throat> Um, and I'm gonna, there's a few ways of doing it. You can pick it out with a brush, you can pick it out with even a bodkin, you can come in to kind of initially pick some of it out. Um, get whatever tool you have. I definitely prefer a brush. So a It's brush, like a wedgie, a you can pick it out however you wish. However you wish. So I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna start working this out the best I can. If I'm pulling out too much material, then I probably um, need to spin it a little bit more but this seems to be pulling out pretty good without it a lot coming out of my brush there's only a little bit coming out which means it's secured in there really well but i'm just really getting in there trying to be kind of aggressive with it because i want those longer fibers to pull out because that's what's going to kind of create this leachy feel to this fly so pulling as much of that out as i can and now what i'm going to do is pretty simple i'm just going to start to palmer this forward all the while i'm going to be stroking those fibers rearward so they don't stack up on top of each other. Okay, so I'm pulling them back, just making sure every wrap forward is in front of the one behind it. And so we, while you're palmering and pulling, the question is, what is ghost gum? What is ghost gum? Essentially, it is what Tim just did, but if you had a marshmallow and you just kept pulling it apart, it uh, gets all over your everything. It gets real sticky. We should have something that we call, look at that's getting wound tight. I like how tight you're winding it. Cause you're really going to get in there and pick that out, aren't I'm you? I'm going to pick like that a good out. Wedge Brian Chan will be happy with you. 
So I've brought that right to behind the bead. I'm now gonna have more than I need. So I'm gonna capture that. Thread wrap behind, thread wrap in front, repeat. Making sure I've got a good capture on that. And then I can go ahead and trim it out. And that being the dubbing noodle, not my thread. And then really important, before I start picking it out, I need to make sure I got some good solid wraps right behind that bead because I don't want any of this to pull out. I'm gonna do a quick half hitch here. I'm gonna put this aside just in case I need to come back and add some more. And then I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna pick out all this dubbing. So it naturally gets stuck on itself, but as we start to pick it out, you're gonna see it's gonna kind of build that full body that we were looking for. So I like to kind of initially come in with the, with the bodkin to kind of get it started and then I'm gonna come, you can use Velcro or a little brush like this, whatever it is. And it looks really messy, but you just gotta really pick it all out like so. It's funny how many things we do in life that are so regional. Like I'm looking up ghost gum and I, I can't find it anywhere. Yeah, well it kind of is, you know, it just is regional. That's a good way of putting it. And then I'm just gonna start combing it rearward. So now we're gonna start to gain that shape, that lead shape that looks oh, really nice. So I'm gonna eat that. So you saw a minute ago how tightly round or wound that looked, and now we've built this beautiful taper to a leech, and all of this stuff just dances and glimmers in the light. Oh, it's, you know it does. I know, and I picked the right <laughs> music for this fly because you did very good. And now, guys, I'm simply gonna come in here and whip finish this right behind the bead, right behind the ruby eye bead. What you should do one time is you're going to tie and I'm going to narrate. You're going to tie. Yeah, well, last episode, you weren't supposed to blow the beans. <laughs> well, they don't know. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of dubbing. A little dubbing. I'm going to add some white resin just behind the bead. Just to make sure that those thread wraps aren't going to go anywhere. Give that a quick little cure. And that is that. Looks kind of yeah. funny, but I promise you this is one you no, want in I your box. Yeah, you. I promise you. Promise. I can promise you. Sir, keep it together. I can promise you, Mr. Hepworth. Wish I could quit you. I, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I, I Say, can't. You're the one playing the music, man. Uh, set, this set isn't broke back music. This is Ruby. When I hear the name Ruby, I quite okay. simply hear this music. Soothing my soul deep mm. inside. It is good. I like it. Ruby eyed leech. That's a keeper. All right. We're going to do something a little different tonight. Oh, yeah. What's that? The next one live. You're going to tie it. And you're going to narrate. I like it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. That's how we're going to do it. All right. That's how we're going to do it, folks. If you want to hear that, uh, I want to hear, see a thumbs up in the comments. <laughs> this would be really good, actually. Yeah. I'm kind of excited. I'm excited, too. I'm real excited. All right, all right. I'm real excited. I'm real first, excited. My first time narrating a real live fight. My first time. Oh, my goodness. Speak what English. is this? <laughs> what is that? Oh, man. Oh, that's the bacon cam. Nobody ever knows what that's going to be. If you want to switch your microphones around, you're going to sound just as soft and sultry as this man over here. All right, we got two thumbs up. You have it there because yeah. Uh, tell got, you what, Ricky. Yeah, yeah, so to, uh, Ricky Bobby. Remember, guys, Orals, let's let's head on a discount code for I suggest tonight's tonight you guys go and buy yourself some balls. <laughs> if the wife's taking them and hitting them, you just go ahead right on that website. You click that you click shop now. Rockamountflushop.net and you go over there and buy yourself some balls. Okay, these balls are only sure to go down when when it's real action. <laughs> But the action's real. Dana, Grandma's watching. <laughs> Grandma, I love you to bits, <laughs> but sometimes my mind wanders. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the bacon cam. That's part of it. We don't know what's in there. Oh, we do. Oh, Who's this guy? That's a beard. Who's this guy? Speaking of. Speaking rolling, of. Rolling dough. Wow. Rolling dough. In gloves, too. That's a great idea. Why I, I never think of that when I'm baking. What I happens hate next? Stuff on my hands. Oh, my goodness. We've got the party <sighs> on. We've Professional got the party HD. On, that is a professional dough roller. TR. Doctor. <laughs> the doctor. Dro the, no. the dough roll. There's no way this is going where it should this, be. This is going exactly where it should be. 
And that's uh, right over here to the news scene. News. We're back to the news. Oh, we've got a few more. Dana uh, should tie the next one. Don't you stay put, guys. You come in for that $10,000 giveaway, and you might see you me might, sitting over there. Him. You might see him doing it. You might uh, have five show crashes, because I remember my first time over here on the Cor- Control I am Center. I'm so excited. If you could even see the amount of buttons that are over there, I'm sure they all do wonderful things. Oh, they do. <laughs> that's a good point. Well, um, if you're ready to get dizzy, But you got to ask yourself the question. What is the question? Do you got balls? Got them. Do you got enough balls? <laughs> Do you got enough balls that in case uh, your clients... So here's the thing. <laughs> the original the original thingamabobber is what I used to guide with. Oh, man. Uh, well, that was like, let's just say the original... Um, new era bobber when you took the toothpicks and the yarn and all the stuff off and it was like oh my god this technology is here to change the way that we fly fish and then yes. we got these plastic ones and the thingamabobber and i went through more leaders and thingamabobbers than i did flies and see i never fished them i, I, I was in the different you should era. spend six <laughs> weeks fishing them so they kink, Almost, get kink your leader right That's, well they kink your leader so i mean a kinky leader hey if you're into that um, if, you know, that's up to you, but, but probably I don't, I do, but they don't split in the middle. Oh, Roger's balls don't split in the middle. <laughs> Things we need to know about the TNL fam. <laughs> this is how we get close folks. Thingamabobbers. Okay. So. Uh, so back to those thingamabobbers. So what happens is when they get a knot, mm-hmm. you know, cause like knots happen. <laughs> casting <laughs> might not be perfect. <laughs> Uh, so knots happen, knots happen, knots happen, knots happen, and then it's so knotted and tight around that little like eye hole of the thingamabobber. Yeah, you never get it off. Right. You gotta cut the thingamabobber, or you gotta cut the leader. Well, yeah. So, anyways, that was a real <laughs> bad experiment. And then the uh, airlocks came out. And they were great. And then the new airlocks came out, the biodegradable, which yeah. I don't know about that. But anyways, they were foam and they weren't as heavy. hard plastic. Yeah. And it was great. And then the Orals came out. Um, oh, we have nothing to do with Orals. We don't get a Tic Tac <laughs> pity back for selling these. Other than what we promised to bring you guys is the best of the best. Because we get to use them. We get to try them. And uh, so you guys got your carts full because I'm going to drop the bomb here. And it's three discount codes, and these will be 20% off. 20% uh, 20% off. off. Uh, I've used a cup. I used one today. I went, I said to Colin, you got Oros? He goes, yeah, just use one of the discount codes. So So now there's only two for you guys. (laughs) There's none, actually. (laughs) Can I add those together? I used it three times. (laughs) Anyways, uh, get your carts ready, and uh, feel free to enter this. Spring is here. Spring is it is here. Guys, get your balls. Okay, get your balls while they're still here. And if you order enough balls, being over ninety nine dollars worth of yeah. balls, Which it's does, free shipping. Does it take hard? It's, 13, it's actually not thirteen bucks for three balls. Yeah, um, Canadian. So like, what, yeah. You would think they would make blue balls. I just think they'd be harder to see on the water, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And they just don't feel as good. No, they don't feel as good, but. They probably don't cast as good. No, I would think um, they feel really heavy. You know, maybe? like under your rod, they're probably not really. Yeah. Awesome. Depends how well that rod's standing up. Anyways, uh, they're willing to to go down or go off or whatever you think your indicator does. Um. Anyways, we got pink, orange, and white. Yeah. That's why we do our posts: pink, orange, and white. Uh, because right. they are the best in the worst light and the best light. And if you're like Keenan uh, and you fish a white one all sunny day. In the foam. It's hard well. to see. Anyways, guys, there's the code. Uh, 20% off. And uh, Oros is the name of the game. So how to suggest you guys clean Rocky Mountain Fly Shop out of Oros tonight. Yeah. What's what's your opinion on, do you think that uh, fish shy away from the pink or the orange? No. No, I just don't believe it either. I've, I've, I've never asked Bruce, man, that one day we had so many fish eat the pink indicator. <laughs> That's true, actually. The and I get, it, I get always... it lots. It's like cool, but uh, what are we doing here? Yeah. So I don't know. There's so many things that flow down the river. Uh, our boats there. I do give a lot of credit to fish because some people are like, well, trout fishermen give a lot of credit to trout. Um, they got the brain the size of a pea, and it's like. I know, but man, sometimes I can't catch. I can't. I can't do it. 
Um, but having said that, I think we overthink thing, which yeah. is these are going to be a part of the giveaways, which we're going to play bingo next. Yeah. I just think sometimes you, we get so like trout will be like, okay, yeah, they need a size 18 in that shade of green fly. Whereas if they're not super keyed in on a hatch per se, maybe they're just searching for whatever. Yeah. Because this makes sense to eat a bobber. Yeah. So Eric, if you go on there and order your Oros from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop and then just type in the notes like, hey, I'll be there in May. Um, just hang on to them. I'll be there to get them. Uh, yeah. So what you need to understand is what I want to talk about. Rodrigo asked the question about the color of the bead and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, there's so many opinions and those are our opinions and their opinions and your opinions. And those things do matter. Uh, but truly the only way to just keep this conversation short is they matter because if it's catching fish, then do it more often. And I can't stress that enough about all the things that you do in fishing. If it works, do it more often. And if it keeps working, tell your buddy about it. And then he does it and he tells his buddy and it works. And then you're like, okay, great. So you start, it's, it's a science experiment every time you go fishing and you collect data, which is why you can't expect to just show up your first five times and have it figured out. I can't even teach you about it. I can tell you about it, but I can't teach you because the only way you actually really learn is by going and doing it repetitively. Mm -hmm. And then you collect your data and you're like, spring on the bow. I don't know where to fish. I know what to use. And then the next year you go and do it and you're like, oh, it didn't work. Why? And then you try to figure out all the other uh, uh, elements and that's fishing. And that's why it's so fun. Pet peeve time. <laughs> the people that <laughs> yes. go in uh, these fly fishing pages and they say it drives me absolutely nuts. Not because I don't like to share information, but when people say, oh, my goodness, I have no time. Can somebody please tell me what the fisher and they say they you know might as well just say like what should i use tomorrow but it's like what are the fish biting on on the bow river for for instance i don't know why don't you go fishing and but then everybody supplies information because they get this pat on the back or this feeling that if they it's ruining it's ruin to me in my opinion of fishing because it's all an opinion it's ruining why we go fishing because um like, isn't it more fun when you go and kind of figure it out and you have some buddies or some mentors that, that kind of help you, but you go figure it out instead of jumping into a Facebook page saying, I don't have time to figure it out, but uh, does anyone want to help me with this information and uh, tell me all the flies I should use tomorrow? I don't know. Some of the fun of fly fishing is deducing on the water. It's not just, hey, I'm bringing a meps out and casting it we're trying to yeah. figure out what the bugs are doing what the fish are eating so i think it it almost robs you of the experience of what it's supposed to be just an opinion because yeah. uh yeah. i'm not like dorky about like don't tell anyone your secret spots or lying to people and i often see people on the river and i'll pull over and i'll i'll give them flies and i'll help them out i think that's great but it's like the idea of like jumping on a facebook page it's toxic there i said it <laughs> Just go okay, fishing. we're, we're going to leave this fishing. conversation alone because I could go on for a long time. <laughs> um, it's true. It's where, true. Where, where are we at? What are we doing, Tim? Well, um, you were supposed to be doing something while I was tying flies. Did you do that? <laughs> you met your mom dollar. <laughs> all right, so we must be ready for some. All right, so it looks like the Oros are all gone. <laughs> what? Yeah, Eric said they're all gone. He went to buy some. No way. All right, good for everybody who got <laughs> their Oros. And, uh, <laughs> are you kidding me? Okay, so everybody's got their bingo card. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play some fly angle, then we're gonna we're gonna jump back. We got the doors of doom. <sighs> do me. Do me. I wonder if it's fifty six doors tonight. I hope not. That's a slimmer odds. <laughs> uh the thrill of figuring it out. Yep, you're right, Scooter. It's the way to do it. <clears throat> All right, so one line will do it. We're going to jump into the bingo time here. Hopefully this. Oh, David Spence drops in the house. Hey, and Nobody Bruins else fans. is Bruins fans here, but I'm sorry. Um, I heard they're not doing well this year. Is that true? Is that true? Ah, sorry. Uh, I guess they're doing great, and we'll have to watch them lose later. All right. Once a Bruin, always a Bruin. I guess I have to cheer for the old team, so... <sighs> 
Uh, but anyways, they are doing well. And uh, there's the first eight calls because this one does take time yes. to get done. So, so, <laughs> so uh, go ahead, Tim. Tell them what you want. Oh, I thought we were going to try to do that game where we both say the same things mm. together. And... Anyways, is, guys, this, four corners. Is, this is me. No. This is you? Yeah, four corners is what I meant. <laughs> It's going to take forever. Four, I know. Four corners, Four is actually, guys. that's less than five because the lines are five, so four is less. And technically, the randomness of the whole thing is what it is. So four corners it is. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> A lot of calls, guys. Keep up with them. What we need from you is if you get your four corners in your card, you have to say bingo in the comments as well as give us what call it's on. So if it was call eight, which is happens to be number eight, you have to say, excuse me, call eight. And then you also need to give us that ID number that's in the corner of yeah. your Yeah, and card. so remember to keep this moving quick tonight. Uh, I'm going to do four calls at a time. And so you might say bingo and you're at call 12, like Tim said, but someone else comes in and says bingo call eight, they win, right? Because they kind of came before you, but I just want to get a few out of here so that we can, you know. It did take 50-some calls last week. Uh, so. I think it was 34. 30? 34. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, there it is. Um, blue, blue, blue. Call 12. Those are your numbers. Uh, 73, 93, 53, 79, 29, 37, 39, 8, 56, 94, 97. Um, the mayor's got an SOS. <laughs> I haven't even been tying for like 10 minutes. What's going on over there? It's a good point. It's a good point. <laughs> All right. So everyone's here for the bingo. We got lots of prizes. Too fast. Uh, Too fast. Well, you can see them all right there. Keep up. Oh, my goodness. That was a late night last night. I was up partying with uh, all the teenage girls. You should probably give some context. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, we were at a concert. Yes, sir. And, uh, yeah. You feeling good? Got, <laughs> in, the mo- got in the mosh pit? I, I started the mosh pit. Just uh, in there punching out teenage girls. <laughs> should say, spent the night at the drunk tank. Oh, man. <laughs> Too many Red Bulls. Too many All right, call 12 is 28. Too fast. Uh, while well, I'm on my way to filling up the middle, we need some corners. We're going to do four at a time. So that's going to take 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, call 13 is 22. Call 14 is 95. 15 is 83. And 16 is 17. 17. Yeah. 16 is halfway to 30, 32. I think we we're at like 34, 36 last week. No, we're almost there uh, then. Yeah, 152 bingo cards playing right now. And uh, you gotta get me one of them bingo cards. I, I would agree. I would agree. Um, no just remember, while you guys are playing bingo, the Fly Fish and Boerver hats that Tim's scratching his head with are on the website. They are for sale. And they are awesome. All right. So if we do not get four corners tonight, we're never doing this one again. All right. 20. Ever. Call 17 is number nine. Call 18 is 87. Call 19 is 38. And call 20 is 74. Poor Troy. I should have changed this card. for 16. <laughs> I forgot I was doing this. Oh, man. All right. We got a lot of offers here. Ron, I don't want yours if it's as bad as Andy's. So. We might just have to go back to a, a single line next time. Might have to. Don't always think this one through, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, there's only like 100 calls that need to happen, so. Um, yeah, did you know that fly fishing originated and back to ancient civilizations in Greece, e- Egypt, and Rome? I don't believe that. However, it wasn't until the Middle Ages that fly fishing began to resemble the sport that we know today. So, if it didn't resemble what it does today, Tenkara, what was it back then? Maybe ish. Uh, During the Middle Ages, fly fishing? fly fishing was primarily a method of catching trout in rivers and streams, and it was often practiced by monks and other religious orders. No, it fits. That's Hence the spiritual journey of how things go. Yeah. All right. Uh, zero for. All right. Doing four more calls. <laughs> it's going to be worse than last week. That's all right. I'm reading, folks. I'm keeping them entertained. These early fly fishermen use handcrafted flies made from natural materials like feathers, fur, and silk 
and they often fished with long, flexible rods made from bamboo or other materials. By the 16th century, fly fishing had spread to England, where it became a popular pastime among the upper classmen. So it was the English that got all snooty about it. Well, can you believe that? Throw another shrimp. No, a shrimp on the. No, nope, that's bobbit. not English. That's Australian. No? What is um, English? Eat some crumpets and tea. <laughs> With bad teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fly fishing tackle began to evolve during this time with the development of shorter, stiffer rods made from materials like ash and hazel and the use of silk lines and tapered leaders. Interesting. I'm full of crazy facts. We might get to 100. Got one corner. All right. We're going to do four more calls. Two, three, four, four. There they are. All right. There might just be no bingo winners tonight because we run out of time. We might have to come back and call the game. We might have to call the game as we're tying the fun. We don't <laughs> know what we're going to do. Uh, sometimes the bingo gets out of hand, but if you want to win great prizes, you got to play great games. Yeah. And this is um, one of them. Wow, well, that was inspiring. You have been a coach, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't so you just try to reenact one of your, your uh, locker room speeches to the boys? Let's get Dylan on here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Goodbye. <laughs> the end. I don't know. Dylan had some good ones. Uh, he's a gooder. Um, I do have a bit of an inspirational speech plan for the team, the TNL team. Two oh. more. Okay. 20, 29, 30, 31, 32. Come on, Art. Win this thing. Oh, One corner. On two more. Court. Go back. All right. So... We really got to keep up here, folks. We got to be quick. We're going to scroll back to the beginning. 73, 93, 54, 35, 55, 60, 41, 112, 25, 63, 6, 78. Uh, that's a mouthful. Perry Albert has a line. Do you want to switch the room <laughs> midway? I almost do. <laughs> I almost do. All right, we're going to go four more. All right, 36. This is where we were last week, folks. We should have a winner in here. We should have a winner. I think that's asking too much of the flying go card. I got to get rid of this numbered one I I meant to, and then I realized I didn't, and I was like, I paid for it, so I'm like, <laughs> might as well just use it. Just keep using it. Might as well just use it. All right, two corners so far, one corner. So what's going to happen is we throw them out. We're going to be able to go back and figure out, because you say bingo, call 36, and then your bingo ID. Yes. And scroll up. What do you need, Trevor? Oh. Trying to get them all in. I'm falling asleep here, folks. 73, 93, 53, 79, 29, 37, 39. We can sound like an auctioneer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rick so Flink. Rick Flink oh, has the thank bingo. Goodness, Rick. <laughs> thank, thank you. Goodness, uh, thank you. Well, Cole. <laughs> 36 is 20. 36 is 20. Uh, other way. I don't know. I don't know which way you want me to swing. I mean, scroll. Eli V5. I don't know what you mean. What you mean? Anyways, Rick, tell us. Again, the rules are bingo call 36. It was on call 32. Who? It was on call th Trevor. I don't know what Trevor, did about. you get bingo? If you got bingo on 32. Rick is on 36. Head. Rick, the rules are bingo call 36. ID number, blah, 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 blah. I think... You might need to read through these one more time. I would, but I can't see them. <laughs> Too far away. The good news for Rick is... Uh... Yes? What's that news? Rick, I need to know what's your bingo card ID. ID 90. Let us see. He doesn't have it. No, that's... Rick, you're killing me, man. Rick. You got to have four corners. Oh, my gosh. I was hoping you won. I think he's just pranking us. Rick. All right, we're <sighs> going four more. Four more, Rick. Come on. 
Uh, looks like a long bingo, Sean, and that's why no one's winning because his twelve <laughs> cards aren't in play. Uh, any four corners? Yeah. Well, it, there's four, only four, four corners, corners on the all card. Four corners, yeah. All four corners. I get yeah. what he's saying. Any of the, if you get a corner, you win. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, all of the fours. Oh, bingo! Brent. Call sixteen thirty-nine. Brent, did you get it? Call thirty-nine. Okay, let's check him out. Let's check him out. Let's check him out. He's he's not feeling well. He was supposed to make his dinner. Probably feeling great. He ate it. So there, we got a bingo there, Holy folks. Holy smokes, Brent. You just win. Bingo, you win everything. bango, wingo, wango. That's how that works. And Mr. Struthers has a Captain Clutch sticker. Oh. So what does that mean? Mr. Struthers doesn't need to go to the bonus uh, round. If I tell you what I need, can you just call this? We, we can, but, but Mr. Struthers won. And he's got a Captain Clutch, so he doesn't need to go through the doors of doom. That, folks, is how you win... My view would be that we offer people a chance to get away from the hustle and bustle of city life. We don't plan for anybody to do anything out here. We just offer them a nice place to have a base and then they can they can either drive, good access here to you know, Rocky, Nordeg, all those places if you want to go farther west, or you can stay on the property as long as you want. Ooh, snack time. Look at our snack time. Brought to you by... Longview Merchantile. Oh, let's go. Huh. That is really good. Dried mango, our favorite. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. Next level. Right, fuzzy Pieces brought to you by Morning View Mercantile. <laughs> oh, wow, that's sour. Oh, I hit that. Does that hit the spot? Oh, yeah. Whoop! 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 Yeah. Whoop! 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 Very good. All right, so those uh, mangoes are my favorite. That's mangoes, my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Have you and tried the, the apples yet? Have you tried them? Yeah. So remember last week? You, if you ate my apples, listen. <laughs> listen. Those were hand delivered here to me, Mr. Claude. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be pissed. I'll be honest. You if you touch my apples, didn't. didn't <laughs> I didn't. All right. Bro. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Can you have me a beer, please? <laughs> I didn't. All right, we're uh, gonna tie the. Uh, it's hot in here. <laughs> Stri strip leech. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. There's something gotta do. Oh wow! Well, episode ninety nine still. No, it's not. No. Wow. You want me to open up the curtain or just take off my shirt? Well, it's a strip leech. You gotta. Oh yeah. We. Oh look. There it is. There it is, folks. Oh, we did. We saw both just nipples. A taste. Just both. <laughs> Yeah, you can't make that up. This, Steve is, this is what he does. Not here. He makes it so hot in here that I gotta take my clothes off. It is, it is hot. Um, well, we do have a birthday tomorrow. Oh, we do. We do. We do. We do. And uh, do we? Mr. Novland, uh, Mr. Novland, great friend and a great guide of fly fisher bobber outfitters. He turns four hundred and twelve tomorrow. 
So ah, put so your clicks together. And uh, yeah, you did miss the 20% off code, uh, Mr. Augustin. And Aaron, I know you're not here, but you often rewatch the show. We love you, and we're so grateful for you in our lives. And we just want to wish you a happy birthday, along with the other TNL fam. Yes. Happy, happiest of the birthdays. Happiest of the birthdays. And remembering, it's not today, it's tomorrow. But when you watch this, maybe that's tomorrow. And, uh... <laughs> yes. Happy birthday, Aaron. Yeah. Happy birthday, Aaron. We love you, buddy. What are, you, what are you getting them, Kate? Anything good? We don't know. Just, just I was uh, wondering if we could do something, and he said, uh, Kate's he said, got uh, dinner, remember? Yeah, we were like, hey, we're free. We're friends. We actually want to go fish fishing. Him, but no. Apparently, le- girlfriend trumps best friends. I legit have to take that gum out, Tim. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> You're not sorry. I've been asking. All right, that's what we do on your birthday. We sing happy birthday to you. We throw the confetti. We play the music. Uh, it's just beautiful. Like that. It is Let wonderful. crank back this. All right, so we're going to do something here we've never done before. Is uh, We're going to have a, <laughs> a narration. This is going to be interesting. So you just tie, and I'll do my best. Uh, it's also Eli's uh, grandparents' 50th tie anniversary. They've been tying together for 50 years. <laughs> Is that code for something? <laughs> I don't know. It's just reading the comments. I'm just oh, reading oh. the comments. Um, I think it's supposed to be 50th. Okay, we're making good time, Tim. This fly can be tied in about two and a half to three minutes. Well, not with you telling me how to do it. That's right. All right. So I'm I'm real looking <laughs> forward to this, guys. Real and looking forward uh, to it. If we just want to head over and you got to exit me and put you in there because this is not even me talking. People need to know it's not my voice. That's not true, Tim. All right, it's Mr. Dana Ladder here, folks. So uh, I just got this ruby eyed leech I'm just going to take out of my Norvice. Do you mind if I talk in a... I don't know. <clears throat> um, so if if you guys want... See, look look at this. Now you made Claude feel bad because he didn't give you uh, any apples. He gave me apples. You just clearly oh, stole them. I, I know. Colleen's like, Claude will bring you more apples. Do a better job of hiding these <laughs> ones. Got to put them right in the truck. He didn't get. You didn't. <laughs> I saw your package, Tim. It didn't have apples. It had apples. He showed me them. <laughs> it, it did. I, he showed me his I, apples. Okay, okay. Matea loved the apples, and I went and got yours because she ate them all, and I gave her yours. Okay, there's the truth. It's for the kids. <sighs> it's it's not. It's about for the kids. kids. I no. used to do that with Ren and goldfish. Okay, <laughs> I would give her all my goldfish. <laughs> you know, no, she would give you the goldfish. You getting this all backwards. That's a good point. Okay, so uh, welcome, folks. Um, what we're gonna tie here? Let me see the sheet. Like the uh, yeah, I need to know some more things about this fly, Tim. All right, so I could choose some better music, but there that doesn't exist. Um, so I'm gonna do it all. Uh, <clears throat> you guys are really gonna enjoy this session here. All right, so I'm going to kind of keep to the cadence of the music. We're going to tie up the strip leech. And what we're going to do here is we're going to tie a size 8 a 2X nymph. What does the 2X nymph mean? Well, that means that your shank is uh, two times as long as a normal shank. Why do you need a long shank? Well, because when you get that UTC 140, you're going to need a long shank. So <laughs> we're going to start just behind the eye of the hook there. And we're going to make some windmill type wrappings and <laughs> we're going to work our way. We're going to cut this tag off because the last thing anybody wants is a tag hanging off the back of their leech. Um, and so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take some staples out of our packaging because your package has staples in it. And no, they're pretty easy to get out. Um, so the so sometimes people use UTC 70, but not Tim. Tim needs to use this Mylar um piece of silver here he uh it's a piece that came out of his panties earlier tonight thong where's your thong <laughs> tim you can't do that you're tying the fly all right so this material here is in your kit it's a shiny silver mylar um and then what we have here is you can use rabbit zonker you can use micro scroll strip whatever you like to use i i would like to recall something last year um where i tied up a micro squirrel disaster game changer remember that he doesn't he's just gonna wrap that thread all the way back to the bend of the hook so where you see is the barb 
And if you haven't already pinched your barb, you're going to have a great point at to which you will lay your thread to just kind of hang there. And so uh, a couple different ways to do this is you can use this Mylar strip that we've supplied you in your kit. Or what we can do is you can just go grab yourself a piece of, of wire. Um, so we're going to use this Mylar strip and we're going to get it tied in at the front of the hook. So we just wrapped our thread all the way back to the front. And now we're going to go and we're going to secure this mylar stripping because it can be slippery and it can fray sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it can fray, but uh, if you're using UTC 140, you will save the day uh, by securing this one to be super solid. So there's two kind of things and there's two kind of reasons that the mylar stripping works better than the wire is because it's all we have right now. <laughs> uh, so the wire is a way of securing this rabbit zonker uh onto your hook and uh so this is probably the most uncomfortable part of this fly is is uh so you got like the pelt the leather part of it so you, what you're gonna do is kind of like say let's put the pelt about uh you know we said it's a 2x nymph hook well that 2x is gonna be also a code to how long this pelt is gonna be just hanging off the back end so if you if you like your leeches looking like that that's gonna be exactly <laughs> It's gonna be exactly how you want to do this, and then we're just gonna we're just gonna just cut the tip off there, and uh, <laughs> uh, so anyways, this is where this fly gets tricky because uh, you don't want to trap any of the uh, fur if you want to call it fur. Um, so what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to split the fur. So oftentimes we lick our fingers because when you get wet fur, it's it splits and spreads easier. And so we're going to expose the leather patch or the hide so that we can take our first uh, thread wrap up with a UTC 140. And we're going to come around and we're just going to secure that leather patch down right at the back of the hook using the barb of the hook as a measuring point as to how far back on the hook bend we're going. And then we're going to pull the pelt back like that and we're going to come forward. And so this is a great way of moving or advancing the thread up the shank of the hook. And then we're going to do the same thing again, probably wetting our fingers to expose the leather patch in between the hair. Um, so we're going to do this multiple times, creating some segmentation, also creating uh, more of a bond for this material uh, to the hook, to the shank of the hook. Uh, so you're going to notice here that I've got my nails growing out nicely so that you guys don't puke when you watch me tie flies. And uh, you can thank my nail tech for doing this. So again, we've split the hair. We've wrapped back, uh, throw some some thread back over the leather. And then we're going to wet our fingers again. And we're going to come in here and we're going to stretch. I got I to gotta look like my hands are busy, right? Because I'm busy watching. So basically, we've repeated this technique uh, four or five times and again so if you were to use a 3x hook you want your leeches to be a little longer uh, you're going to put a few more segmentations just kind of equaling those all the way to the front of the hook um, but what you don't want to do is trap those those hairs down and so now what we're going to do is just going to really uh, trap the, the the hairs down <laughs> like we did <laughs> like <laughs> like we didn't want to do <laughs> but uh, uh, when we kind of get to the end here so this is going to uh, kind of close off the front of the fly. We're going to build a little bit of a thread ramp. We're going to secure that down. We're going to come underneath um, like we do everything. We go a little over top. We go a little underneath. And then we're going to cut this out uh, nicely. So what you're going to notice, if you aren't using a thicker thread, you're going to probably break your thread here at this point. So we're going to get to cut that uh, pelt leather, whatever you want to call it, as close as we can. And then we're going to create a little bit of a thread ramp and uh, a head. So, I mean, if your leech has a head, this one will have a head. So we'll call it more of a thread ramp. And that's just for aesthetic sake so that it looks great like that. So then we're going to do a half hitch, kind of throw that over here. And we're going to get that thing done. If you want, if you're not for sure about your half hitches, uh, you can go and whip finish that because a whip finish is a great way to save your work. Uh, so, folks, we've done this once and we're going to do it twice, but this time we're not going to use thread. We're going to use that mylar wrapping. Or if in some cases you have a piece of wire rib, well, you can use that too. But honestly, uh, wire ribs kind of overkill this mylar 
Uh, silver strip is going to work just perfect. It's going to give a little bit of a flash in there. Um, not totally the purpose, more so just securing this down. But it's important that you do go back and find exactly where that UTC 140 thread was uh, creating these variegations in this leech. And so I believe we did four uh, plus the head. So we're going to just continue to do the exact same thing as uh, we continue to split this hair apart. Some people will say this is a bit overkill. Um, but hey, I mean, we are tying the strip leech. So when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So we're going to come back to here and then we're going to secure this mylar strap down. Guys, you're not going to believe it, but we're almost done because we've only used two materials uh minus your hook and your thread but we've used two materials to create a super effective fly we're going to go a little behind a little over top and then we just want to kind of we're going to go in there and we're going to cut that off afterwards uh and the really cool thing about the fly tying table that we are tying on is we have access to some solarez bone dry which once we create this cute little head thread ramp here we're gonna whip finish it. So you're gonna grab your whip finish, you're gonna make a figure four, and you're gonna wrap that nice and tight. About three or four whip finish wraps should do the trick. And we're gonna go twice just because we're not sure the first one was good enough. And that's kind of it. That is your strip leech, but maybe three times because, <laughs> <laughs> because you can't be sure that two is enough, but three is better. And uh, when you are for sure, you're just gonna cut that down. And then you have to understand folks, a little bit of Solarez bone dry is going to make this the best fly that you ever tied. And it's going to make it last a really long time. Lake fishermen all over the world have raved about this fly for many years. Even back in the days when lakes were called locks over in Scotland, it was one of the best flies they ever did fish. So we thought we'd bring it over to Canada, teach you how to tie the strip leads with a little bit of UV cure, this fly ain't going anywhere. And well, oh, that, my friends, is me and Tim Hepworth tying the strip leech together. I'm out of breath, Tim. How do you do this? Very good. How do you, very, very good. How do you do this every single <sighs> week? I got to piss. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just talk it out, you know? A little yeah. BSing. It all works out. Yeah. And sometimes you just do it three times because two times isn't enough. Yeah, well, when in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they do stuff. Uh, in oh, Rome. yeah, and then he wants Rosina. I oh, see man, how it yeah, is. It's never lot. enough. Okay, I'm I'm here trying to focus on the game at, at hand, <laughs> at task. Oh man, look at that! A oh. couple, couple good flies, good leechy, easy ones. It's eight twenty eight. We've done super good today. This is I know. Well, I, we're making up for last week where we went to ten thirty. That's a good point. Uh, Scooter, don't leave. We are not good. We're we're literally ready to jump into wins yeah let's get to wins time oh yeah you asked one. for that a while ago it's okay it was only a while ago that's ah, okay well hopefully guys you enjoyed those flies this week um we've got a couple of good ones coming to you next week as well if you thought this was an easy week next week will not, not be easy it's not easy We're bringing out the dry fly game but that's okay it will be uh yeah it'll be good good couple flies a good couple practical flies though so there's that. Yeah. And so if you if you want to see more of that uh, Tim Ties and I Lie commentary, let us know. Hit us up in the comments. Tell us. Whew. If you enjoyed that. I, I, will, that. I will not be doing it next week for those drive flies. <laughs> <laughs> that will have you guys in a tizzy. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and because, like I said at the beginning, if you tied along with us in this episode, let us know because... Um, I think that's manageable. Those are some great flies. Easy to tie. You've got material subjectively to tie up to five more, and I highly recommend. <clears throat> the quick ties will be out tomorrow morning. A lot of things. It's Easter weekend. It, it, it is Easter weekend. Easter's an interesting thing for me because it's so like, all. it's never, it's never in the same time. Yeah, it, like next year we looked, it's like end of April, March. Yeah, end of March, and the next year it's back in April. Very yeah, strange. so it, it's it's just weird to me because it's a very important time of the year and there's a reason for this season as well and it's very important. But the fact that it rotates all the time it is it is a strange thing. Yeah. I think it has to do with like the moon though, not the calendar. I know, but like did Jesus come out of the tomb when he's like I'm going to check the moon? 
I don't I don't know. Why doesn't Christmas do that? Does anybody have an answer for me? That's a great question. Great question. What another great question is, is something like this. Our website. Our website. So if you go over to our website, you guys are going to want to do this because lots of people are asking about this. Uh, um, you're going to go over there, flyfishingbowriver.com, and you're going to click here more, and you're going to click on the store, and then you're going to go down here, and you're going to click oh, on the hats. hats. Oh, who's that guy? And you're going to click on Handsome Tim. <laughs> Okay, and then you're going to choose. We have two different colors. They're right there. Frank's wearing one and Tim's wearing one. <laughs> Frank's uh, had, Frank had a days. Frank had a bad <laughs> tattoo one time. Um, so, yeah, we got these two colors. You can choose your color, add them to cart. You might as well buy both. That's what a lot of people are doing because they can't decide. Um, so you guys asked for it. It's like, hey, one of these hats is going to be for sale. There's Frank showing off the blue one. There and is. Uh, there's Tim showing off what we'll call steel all. I don't remember what I called the color. Yeah, it, you call it kind of a uh, yeah a greeny almost thing, but it's pretty tan. Yeah, it's okay. It's not tan. It's like really I, light. I know. I don't know what yeah. it is. Light. Yeah. Light in color. Oh, Jazz sent us new baking cam photos. Apparently. <clears throat> yeah. So what we need to do there. Yeah, Joe, I like that idea. That's great. The squirrel, uh, pine squirrel collar, and then adding a bead to it. Um, yeah, super easy if you just add a bead to this fly to create, uh, you know, a, a weighted pattern. So good, good yeah. additive to that. Yes. So Chaz got the baking cam all finished up. Tell me it's delivered to the front door. No, that's a fact. It's not. <laughs> Oh, well. Um, yeah, so go ahead, order your hats. They are there, and when they're gone, they're gone, just like everything else we've done here. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we're going to go check out the baking cam one more time. And uh, whammo. Oh, what is that? That is Easter bread, folks, because it <sighs> is Easter. And ultimately, that's what the Chaz was making with his black gloves on. Oh, that is very good looking. Yeah. I would like it I in would, the tummy. Eat that. I would eat that. I would eat that too. So that's the that's the baking cam. That's how you get on the baking cam. You just got to bake something and send it to us, and we'll do our best to remember to put it up on the baking cam. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. I'd like a little bit of that. <clears throat> All right, this time of the night is the best time of the night, and we've hit this really early tonight, uh, probably because these flies were, were quick. Yeah, they were quicker quicker They're patterns. Quick, quicker patterns, and um, so you should tie lots of them because yeah. they are quick. So what does this mean? If you're here for the first time, raise your hand because this is not the time to leave. This is the time to hang out because it's a magical time of the night where we get to share our wins. What are wins, Tim? Uh, well, WIN stands for what is important now, okay? And that can um, parlay just to the word itself. What is a WIN? What happened in your week um, that was significant for you? Um, definitely want this to be something that's a, a positive thing, and it shouldn't take you too much to think about. Uh, the thing for those of us who've been around for a little while and doing this is uh, this is create a lot of intention in our life week to week. We look to those things, and it's very like, oh, yeah, that that's going to be my WIN to share this Thursday because... Yeah. Um, Intentionally, you're looking for it. Yeah, you're just looking yeah. for it. And it's a great way of encouraging each other, talking about it. Me and Dana will share ours, and um, and then you share them in the comments, and we're going to read through them because it's important to talk about our yeah. our wins every week and share the positives of uh, what's going on in each other's lives. Yeah, and even if you don't feel comfortable sharing your win, it's, it's, in, it, it's important that when we say, what was your win for the week? You got something that came to your head super quick, and that's that's your win. Right. And so, so what's cool is as we've done this for the past couple of years, the win segments is that we start looking for things during our week <clears throat> that we can't wait to share with you guys. And I know I talked to some of, some of you guys throughout the week and you're like, this will be my win for the week because mm -hmm. it's that intentionality that Tim was talking about. It drives you to look for the good. When you look for the good, you start, you know, when you buy a red car, all of a sudden everyone has a red car. It's a psychological effect of starting to look for the positive. And in doing that, uh, you will find the positive. And then trust me, that has a dramatic change on your life. 
huge change. Yeah. Perspective in life is everything. Yeah. So, Tim, you're up. As always, you share your win for the <laughs> night. I always go first, I guess. Maybe we should switch it up next year, you know? Maybe next year, yep. Yeah, yeah make you go first. Okay. No, he's not going to let me do that. So, uh, what is my win this week? Well, I just feel like uh, a little overwhelmed this week. It's been, um, it started off with last Thursday. What an incredible um, day to celebrate with you guys as our, our, our 100th episode was awesome. We're super grateful. I know I speak for both Dana and I. Um, we know a big portion of this group, you know, pitched in and, and got that artwork done um, from Kate for us. And that was just a really overwhelming night, but a really good night, really positive um, coming into what happened the next day, which was we got to go fishing. Yeah, It was our first float together. We took Chaz out and uh, it was a, that, that was a huge win for me. You know, um, I haven't, and I'm not quite ready to, but I haven't shared with a lot of you guys what's been going on in my life for the last six months. But needless to say, this has been one of the longer winters of my life. And it, there's there's so much power in the spirituality and the therapy of water. And uh, for me, Friday was such a, a needed day. And uh, I just came out of it feeling super rejuvenated. And um, I mean, there's nothing better than spending time with a couple of these guys as well. But all in all, just an incredible week. I'm thankful for you guys and thankful for the opportunity to get on the water with some warmer weather. And uh, yeah. we're going to go tomorrow. Repeat that again tomorrow. So Yeah, it seems like a good habit to get into. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, I know we said it was our win last week was the hundredth episode and everybody that showed up and came and, and supported us and, and the gifts that were given and the memories that were made. Uh, I think upon reflection, like as the next couple of days went on, I just realized how big 100 is and even more so is to just go back through a lot of the videos and realize who has been there with us on this journey since day one. Um, another cool thing, like I told you guys that I would do is that I would keep this, uh, on my desk and it's just really cool because it, it refocuses me on basically our why, why we're doing this, why we're here and what TNL is all about and celebrating our wins, finding the good in the week, how to be better humans is all a part of, uh, the success of this. So a big win is the reflection of last Thursday and the hundredth episode and understanding that both of us because we share we share we share all our friends um not in a weird way <laughs> but in a great way and to know that fr like they show up right they just show up friends show up uh, we didn't expect anybody to be here we probably couldn't articulate all of this last week but we just it's just that people show up and then when we went over to, to the rocky mountain fly shop after everybody was still there waiting for us and i know it was late and i know it was a thursday and everybody's got to work tomorrow and they got to drive back to calgary or edmonton but people just waited uh to share that pretty special memory with us yeah so yeah that was really cool and that was awesome and we're super grateful another really interesting i don't know how to like parlay this into a win but today is the anniversary of the humboldt bus crash um and so yeah, it was a pretty powerful, horrible, tragic uh, event that took place, what is it, six years ago now? Um, mm -hmm. So in the hockey world, if you haven't heard of this, I, c I mean, I'd be shocked. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people lost their life that day. Uh, but something, it just, it just hit home. And today it was kind of, I got onto a rabbit trail of going back and remembering the day, the moment, the things that happened. Uh, a lot of kids on that team I had coached through hockey, a couple of kids on that team I had traded out to Humboldt the, the previous year. And so there's a lot of association guilt or wondering, you know, how I played a role in that. Um, but, but it just, I, I don't know how to parlay this into win. I just want to take kind of that moment to just remember, you know, what had happened um the people the warriors the kids that have battled through a lot that survived that crash um yeah and I just just wherever you guys are just to take a moment to kind of like think about the families um as close as i felt to the situation there's people that are extremely close to the situation or people that were the situation um so i just want to talk about it because i know last year we did green shirt day which is is technically tomorrow 
um, April 7th. And uh, just just to kind of keep those names like uh, Toby Boulay and the whole green shirt day, the idea of donating your organs. And I know that after that happened, I made sure that I got signed up as an organ donor on my license. That's how it works in Alberta. Uh, so that I know because of the inspiration of what Logan did, it's like the, the ripple effect of what he's going to have on saving people's lives through people donating uh, or just being aware that that's actually a thing. So it's it's nothing to do with a win. It's just something (coughs) that I thought of. I think Um, that that what you just stated at the end though is, is that win. Um, He's created a lot of, a lot of change for people. Yeah. That awareness of, I mean, yeah, if you are, if you aren't an organ donor, um, I respect that some people have maybe some re- religious beliefs around it, but I yeah. I can't see a reason that that isn't a profitable thing. Um, and he brought, I mean, the loss brought so much awareness to that. Huge, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then what I'll leave you with, so I said earlier, kind of a bit of an inspirational thing, but I, I read this earlier this week, and I just thought it was like extremely powerful given the idea that we always say love people catch fish. And just kind of touching on a little bit about what I think love is. Um, Rainbow Salt is the author. I don't know exactly who. I think she has a real name somewhere. I think it's a she. (coughs) Um, But the, the statement goes like this. The truth is love exists in much more than a romantic partner. Love is everything around you. And I hope that each of you learn how to open your eyes to that. I hope you find love in every aspect of your life. I hope you find it tucked into early morning sunrises and the smell of your favorite places. I hope you find it strung between the laughter that you share with friends. I hope it bounces off of you when you hug the people you care for. I hope it swells within your rib cage whenever you hear your favorite song or discover something that moves you. I hope you fall in love with growth and change and the messiness and the beauty of making mistakes and becoming exactly who you want to be. And it's kind of talking to you here, Tim. I hope you find love in places that were once devoid of it, in places within yourself that you could have been softer to, kinder to in the past. Because if there's one thing I've learned is that love is so much more than a human being who holds your heart. Love is everything around you. It is everything. And I know people are struggling. And I just read that. I can send it to you if you want. And it's just very like just profound and like we say love people catch fish and it's like yeah getting to see everybody come here for the 100th episode getting to go to rocky mountain fly shop uh giving people hugs just just feeling the love like as cliche as that sounds and it's like yeah love is big yeah yeah um there's that so uh now you guys Wow, that's right over our faces. <laughs> uh, Scooter's win of the week was getting out in nature with my girl and throwing the fly rod for the first time of the year. Uh, solid commentary. <laughs> Wonder Very if he's like, do they cast the line or just go walk up and throw the rod? <laughs> like, do they get the rod back after? I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting. That's uh, okay. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Adrian, uh, my win, my recovery is going pretty good. 97% Oilers are winning. Uh, family is happy and healthy. Also had a lot of great messages from you guys about my recovery. OKP. Mr. Dickow, the mayor, my win for the week, surviving a day of shopping with a grandson. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. I survived the hundredth anniversary evening. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Did good. Uh, Cody, my win was seeing my cousin <clears throat> I haven't seen in years. I uh, came down uh, for fog tying. Fly tying at the shop. <laughs> Fly tying at the shop. <laughs> fog. They're tying up fogs. Over the- <laughs> I don't know what they're tying. <laughs> awesome. Hillbilly win for the week. We're out on the coast with the fam jam, doing a little fishing, a lot of relaxing. Tomorrow we're celebrating my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. Incredible. Have a great week, everyone. OQP LPCF. Uh, Dean. Glad to hear this, man. Uh, so he booked a spot for the wife and himself yeah. for the free fly fishing lesson. I uh, can't wait to see you guys again. Yeah, I can't Heck wait to see yeah. you too. <clears throat> Mr. Cole, my two wins this week was seeing the boys again on the river. Yes. Uh, any excuse to see the TNL fam is worth it. And Allison came back from Montana and bought me the Fly Tying Adventures in Fur, Feather, and Fun book. 
Super interesting read. Cool. Sounds awesome. like a promiscuous book that <laughs> wasn't purchased at a fly shop. Does it come with handcuffs? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the question. Or they're furry <laughs> handcuffs. Oh, that's all. Uh, it was great to see a cool. It week. was super odd. I, I mean, I just cherish the friendship we have, the relationship, the respect yeah. uh, for what Cole does. Um, yeah, he's, he's a huge part of why we can do what we can do. Mm-hmm. Um, because, because Cole puts himself out there every day, uh, making sure that our our industry, our environment, our um, our resources are protected. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colleen, my win this week is seeing how excited Claude is about his retirement countdown dropping into single digits. He can't wait, and neither can I. Oh, so pumped for you! Yeah, that's so pumped, super awesome. that's incredible. Uh, Jeff, my win is oldest turned twenty four. So freaking proud of him. Um, the youngest is on an amazing adventure in Oregon, and my life uh, is falling into place nicely. Lots of positive things and people. Yeah, that's awesome. Chas, my win. Uh, Carol and I baking together, making pierogies and Easter bread. Uh, win fishing with my besties and smashing laughs all day. I'm so blessed to be part of this community. Thank you, everybody. Only quality people. It's a great day. Uh, Eric, my win for the week. All the love and prayers from the Tino family for my eye surgery. Um, I was very nervous, and I thank you. Second, when turkey season opens next week, got out today and found a lot of sign. Still no passport. Passport. Mr. Flink, I was able to uh, quick start our FFI Fly Fishing Club for Disabled Vets this week. It's kind of died due to COVID, but my board of directors are ready to start recruiting and getting events put together for the rest of the year. It felt great. To hear them anxious to get going again. I'm trying to get them to log in to TNL to join this wonderful family. Mm. And what a great place to bring all those fo- fine folks together. Yeah, great spot for them. Eli, uh, my win getting to go to Vancouver Island for my grandparents' 50th anniversary. All Super awesome. jealous. Mr. Bruce, my win was celebrating Morgan's birthday on Tuesday. Just the two of us hanging out, eating snacks, and watching movies. Like we did when she was little. <laughs> that sounds she's like a great day. Still little. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, <laughs> she's still not super big. Uh, uh, Kenny, go ahead. Uh, my wind is in the weather, is finally cooling. It's mid autumn and the humidity is gone. People are friendlier when they are not hot and flustered. Where are you, Ken? Australia. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like you are not where we are. Uh, Mr. Pape, my win this week was getting some unexpected positive feedback at work. Uh, we all toil in obscurity most of the time, but it's nice when someone notices and appreciates what you do. Yeah. It's always nice. Always nice. Uh, Mike, uh, my win, I participated in a real recovery retreat this past weekend on the Guadalupe River in Waring, Texas. The healing power of brotherhood through fly fishing is hard to describe. I highly recommend this organization to anyone fighting or recovering from cancer, LPCF. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Super awesome. Uh, Mr. Fuller, my win this week is just living life. Have a great night, everyone. Absolutely. Uh, Joe, win of the week is continuing to be around. Awesome company and quality people from from a round of golf Saturday uh, to snook fishing, dock lights Monday night, the TNL family tonight, and those I'm spending Easter with. Thankful for all those around me and the time spent together doing activities we all enjoy. Mr. Sather, my win is heading to Montana this weekend after a hectic work week. Very excited to potentially wet a line and also do some snowboarding. Yeah. So he's going to wet a line. He's not going to go throw his rod somewhere. <laughs> Scooter. <laughs> uh, Roger. Uh, lots of good stuff this week. My youngest daughter and my wife are safely in Montreal for the Irish Dance World Championship. A uh, major home project is well underway and nearing completion. Big weight off my shoulders. I finally have some free time I can devote to spending time outside. Mr. Jones. Call him Mr. Jones. Mm. My win for the week got on the river this past week with Fly Trout and another new buddy, Dan. Uh, More importantly, my two girls are off to the States for a swim training camp without mom and dad on their own with their team. Can't wait to hear about their exciting adventure. Have a great weekend. Um, Yeah, Easter weekend. Yeah. All right, Flyfisher54, my win for the week is finally seeing warmer weather and getting to spend another great time with the Tino family. Um, off to Okotoks for the weekend to spend Easter with my nephew and his family. Yeah, 
Well, it's Easter, and uh, what are you doing for Easter? I'm going to head out to Canmore with the family and uh, see the in-laws. And yeah. And do a little remembering of the reason for the season. Yeah. Um, We're going to um, Cacao Pepe. You would do that. I would, Sunday Maybe night. Maybe we should do that tomorrow morning. They're not open till Saturday. <sighs> like they don't do the, they don't do the I don't morning. like that. They're so I don't either. We got to get to Calgary <laughs> and get Starbucks. That's true. That sounded so weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter, Dean. TNL fam. What what a couple words those are. TNL fam. TNL fam. Hmm. It's profound. Yeah, family it's is belonging to with an incredible group of people and uh we found them. Yeah, we did. We found you guys. Oh, Mr. Sather coming in late, coming in hot. Uh, when this week was getting, to, that's not a win. That's, that's terrible. Getting to attend an Oilers game last Saturday. Grandkids going to stay for a few days starting this coming Saturday. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, everybody I needs love, Dana, even the Oilers. I, I know, but I got to pee. <laughs> 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 all right, folks. Sometimes we quit early and it's n- probably the first time all year um by sometimes it's never this yeah and this is the first time what does early even mean nobody no one knows nobody knows there's no schedule there's no schedule but there is because uh, next thursday we're back here with a western green drake and a coffin fly um bam get on bam. some dry flies and then after that we've got a couple saltwater flies yes yeah, and good then ones. we're gonna Classic. end the season with uh, a leech and a worm that's it, folks. I can't believe we are all the way to the um, bottom of that poster. Keep posted for the $10,000 donation giveaway uh, as those donation tickets become available very soon. And, um, yeah, we've got so many things, especially Mr. Blake Teague's uh, incredible thing that he has made for somebody uh, valued at over $2,000. Very excited. Worth its weight in gold is all you need to know. <laughs> so, yeah, well, we'll see you next Thursday. Remember, go Oilers, go. Like, can I ban Adrian? <laughs> um, be somebody's reason to smile this week uh, because it's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. You're the reason somebody's smiling. Think, Just think about it. Yeah. You are the reason somebody is happy and smiling. Okay. I literally just leaked out of my depends. I <laughs> <laughs> will see you guys. <laughs> see you next, next week. I can feel my body fold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Look can be deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me. So put your hand in mine. Follow me. Let me waste your time. Set up the do some stupid shit. Take a seat. Let me waste your time. So the top of time. Take home.